Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I am Fatma Amir, uh, the chair of the Viral Infection Working Group uh, of the ISAC. Uh, the working group members are delighted to meet you today uh, to discuss a very interesting and let us say a hot topic, which is mass gathering. Yes, uh, mass gathering is now a new specialty of medicine. Uh, it's also known as event uh, medicine, uh, crowd medicine, and mass gathering health. Uh, it's a field. What's that? I see. Uh, it's a field of medicine that explores the health effects or risks of mass gatherings and the strategies that contribute positively to effective health services delivery during these events. Uh, WHO defines mass gathering as a planned or spontaneous event uh, that gathers substantial numbers of attendees uh, who might strain the health planning and response capacities of the host community of the city or the whole country. Uh, during mass gatherings, many risks threaten the participants' health due to the large influxes of people, many from countries with outbreak-prone infectious diseases. Second is the high degree of social mixing and crowd interactions. International mass gatherings can amplify the transmission of infectious disease, and infections can spread from the home to the host community during travel and from the event to the home community on return. Uh, mass gatherings take many forms. Uh, some are short-lived, others uh, span days, even weeks. Some attract a few thousands, others hundreds of thousands and maybe millions. Uh, mass gatherings take many forms. Uh, first is the, the largest scale religious pilgrimages, like the Muslims Hajj and Umrah, and also the Hindu religious pilgrimage, the Kumbh Mail. Uh, it includes also sports events like the World Cup competitions and regional and national commemorative events. This is a national in Egypt. It's called Sami Museum. Uh, it includes also music concerts, uh, cultural events like the Festival of Pacific Art and the Micronesian Games. Another form of mass gathering which have led to a disease declared by WHO as a public health emergency of international concern, which are the gay and sex parties. Uh, during mass gatherings, there are many health care uh, concerns. Uh, today, we'll focus on infectious disease transmission, specifically viral diseases. Uh, transmission through the respiratory system, uh, the uh, foodborne and waterborne diseases, uh, the new viral challenge, which is the monkeypox, and then vector borne diseases. Now, let us start. Uh, the first speaker will be Professor Jafar Al Tawfiq. Uh, Department of Medicine, uh, Indiana University School of Medicine, Indiana Police, USA, and the Infectious Disease Unit, Johns Hospi uh, Hopkins, uh, Aramco, uh, Aram Aram uh, Aramco Healthcare, Dharan, Saudi Arabia. Uh, Dr. Uh, Jafar will uh, speak about um, uh, viral diseases transmitted by the respiratory route. Uh, please uh, go, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Jaffer. Uh, uh, sorry, one minute because you start. Uh, discussion will be left to the end of the webinar. Anyone can write uh, his or her question and then we'll answer. Yes, please uh, go on, Dr. Jaffer.
Thank you very much, uh, Professor Amr and Isaac for the uh, kind uh, invitation. In the next uh, 25 minutes or so, I will be uh, discussing the spread of viral respiratory infections uh, in uh, mass uh, gatherings. And uh, Professor uh, Amr had already um, gave um, an overall uh, review of the um, mass uh, 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 gathering events. Uh, before I start, I have nothing uh, to uh, disclose. Um, the outline of the presentation, um, I will pick up from where uh, Professor Amr had uh, ended, uh, which is introduction of the mass gathering. From there, I will discuss briefly some of the viral respiratory infections and some of the outbreaks uh, related to those in mass gathering. And uh, the third section will be uh, describing some of the coronaviruses, mainly the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus, and of course, the current uh, COVID-19 pandemics in relation to mass uh, gatherings. And before I end, I will uh, discuss briefly some of the mitigation, mitigation and uh, control activities. Um, as had uh, been alluded to, mass gathering definition had uh, multiple uh, definitions, uh, some of which uh, in relation to the number of individuals who attend these events, and these are uh, listed as either more than 1,000 or more than 25,000 people. And I think uh, there is also an, a more inclusive definition, which is uh, the presence of large numbers of people attending an event that is focused at specific site for a finite time. And many of those uh, events and the number of attendees will stretch uh, the healthcare system that is present in the uh, hosting uh, country. There's a lot of uh, public health uh, impact of those uh, mass uh, gatherings uh, because they pose a unique challenge uh, for maintaining uh, public's health. And the events and the uh, presence of um, uh, public health uh, challenges are related to the type of the events. Uh, it's also related to the duration, size, and location. So different mass gathering may pose a different um, public health uh, uh, challenges. Uh, for example, in musical uh, mass gatherings, they have uh, a different aspect uh, related, for example, to the uh, possibility of having the sexually transmitted uh, infections in other Mass gatherings such as religious may have the spread of uh, respiratory or foodborne uh, illnesses. Uh, the public health uh, challenges also related to the uh, not only the number but the um, different aspects of the individuals who are attending. Are those visitors are from different uh, nations, uh, regions? are their cultures uh, for the potential importation of infectious uh, diseases into mass uh, gatherings and thus may become a greater when those individuals leave the mass uh, gatherings and go to their uh, uh, respective uh, countries. So the challenges are either within the event of the mass gathering or after the mass gathering with individual leaving to their uh, countries. The types of mass gathering uh, can be uh, classified as spontaneous or planned. Some of the spontaneous uh, mass gathering we have seen, uh, for example, attending the funerals, uh, we have seen the pops uh, funeral in the past. Planned mass gathering can be further classified in those which are recurrent events but different locations. So many of the sports games, the Olympics, uh, World Cup, uh, FIFA World Cup, these are recurrent events, but they uh, are conducted in different locations and different countries. We have also a recurrent uh, and planned events would take uh, place in the same location. 
And Professor Amr had mentioned uh, an example of that is the Muslim pilgrimage or the Hajj would take place in um, the holy cities in Saudi Arabia at specified uh, time. And I will discuss some of the uh, studies that had been conducted. And I think the Hajj is one of the mostly uh, studied uh, mass gathering uh, so far. There are multiple emerging uh, respiratory viruses that we had uh, witnessed uh, over the last uh, 20 years or so. Some of those had made an impact in the mass gatherings, other did not uh, uh, result in uh, infected individuals during mass uh, gatherings. We have seen, for example, the H1N1 uh, 2009. We have seen the uh, emergence of multiple uh, influenza viruses and the emergence of Middle East respiratory syndrome coronavirus in 2012, as well as the recent uh, emergence of the SARS-CoV-2, which is the causative agent of uh, COVID. For a mass gathering, uh, it's important to have surveillance system. And I think there are different surveillance system that are currently uh, employed by different uh, uh, organizations, societies, as well as countries. These are may rely in the simple syndromic surveillance, which is collecting the clinical data from chief uh, complaints, uh, presentation, discharge diagnosis, uh, and uh, this may then signal the presence of an outbreak or an increase in the number of the cases. Some of those surveillance uh, data are based on laboratory diagnostics and also some of the studies that had looked at the uh, presence of uh, viral respiratory infection in mass uh, uh, gatherings. Medication sale, and for example, the uh, use of uh, antihistamine, uh, some of the medication for the influenza or cold. Uh, and there are some studies which have uh, shown that the over-the-counter drug uh, sales correlated with influenza activity. For self-reporting uh, of participatory uh, symptoms, uh, which rely on voluntary participation of the individuals, this surveillance system might not be a very uh, effective method. Nevertheless, it's one of the surveillance systems. Then uh, we have the informal surveillance and epidemic, uh, uh, epidemic intelligence, which detect relevant information from the internet nationally and uh, internationally. Uh, we now have a lot of the social platforms that the people may uh, post uh, information about the uh, occurrence of any uh, illnesses during mass gatherings. Uh, the uh, second part of the presentation, I'll be talking about viral respiratory infection outbreaks in mass uh, gathering. We're looking at some of the frequent uh, mass gathering related respiratory disease outbreaks. These are at uh, mass gathering sport events, large scale open air festivals, Christian mass gathering events, and the Hajj and the uh, Umrah. Some of the uh, frequently uh, cited mass gathering uh, related respiratory disease outbreaks in this uh, systematic uh, review that had been published uh, recently looked at uh, 21 articles describing 72 mass gathering related respiratory disease outbreaks and 56% uh, were uh, related to agriculture fairs and influenza A, H3 and 2 variant and 35% were in youth summer camps and pandemic influenza AH1N1, which is the 2009 uh, inf emerging uh, uh, influenza uh, virus. We see in the uh, table is the settings. We have fair camps and sporting events, and we could see the pathogens are also variable from uh, influenza, mumps, and measles, and we'll see these probably three uh, common uh, pathogens uh, in subsequent uh, studies. You can see also the outbreak uh, frequency that uh, most of those are related to the influenza and there are very few of the outbreaks related to measles or uh, mumps. Some of the sport uh, uh, events uh, uh, in this uh, systematic uh, review that had looked at uh, outbreaks in mass uh, gathering and I have kind of highlighted the uh, ones related to respiratory, because there are other uh, 
uh, illnesses, which may be a gastrointestinal or uh, neurological uh, related to meningitis may also occur. But since the, those, or at least some of them will be discussed later, I'm focusing in the respiratory viral illnesses. Um, the, in the International Special Olympic in 1991, there have been a respiratory illness related to measles. Uh, measles. And in the Winter uh, Olympiad in the US in 2002, uh, we have the influenza. And measles also was uh, associated with the international youth sporting events. It's very important to note that uh, some of the estimated incidents per 100,000 attendees is uh, variable. Uh, for uh, measles, it had been uh, reported to be around uh, 3 to uh, 13, and we'll say some of, of these incidences in different uh, uh, events. In a larger scale, open air festival, and I think that's also a key determinants of the possibility of the transmission of respiratory uh, viral illnesses, as we discussed, not only the type, but also where does the uh, mass gathering occur? Is it in an open space, open air, or is it in a closed uh, uh, environment? Uh, the most uh, common uh, of those respiratory illnesses, uh, as we have seen in the previous one, is influenza, measles, and mumps, with uh, variable uh, estimated incidence per 100,000 uh, attendees uh, from uh, one uh, for the uh, Disney theme parks uh, in California in 2014-15, where um, the uh, respiratory illness related to measles virus was only one uh, to as high as 422 for respiratory mumps uh, viruses in the annual village festival in Spain in 2006. Some of the outbreaks at uh, religious mass uh, gatherings, such as the Christian mass uh, gathering events, uh, this also um, uh, review showed that in church uh, gatherings, uh, we had measles, mumps, and influenza. So are, these are the same viruses that we have seen in previous mass gatherings are also being uh, reported at uh, other uh, mass gathering with a similar trend uh, or variability in the incidence of their 100,000 uh, attendees. As I mentioned, I think Hajj is one of the most uh, commonly studied and systematically the kingdom, the Ministry of Health in Saudi Arabia, uh, and the presence of the uh, World Health Organization Collaborative Center for Mass uh, Gathering that I had the pleasure of uh, uh, collaborating and uh, working uh, together with multiple international uh, scientists from the world to study the uh, emergence as well as the prevalence of uh, respiratory and other uh, viral uh, illnesses. In this uh, systematic uh, review, looking at the most common respiratory viruses by PCR, there are multiple studies, and we could see the uh, most common were rhinovirus, influenza virus, and the different types of the uh, influenza. It's very uh, important to note that different studies had uh, uh, used uh, different methodology for the diagnosis of respiratory illnesses. As we know, uh, PCR is one of them, uh, and uh, culture as I will show in the next uh, slide. So this slide looked at the culture methodology for the presence of uh, viral uh, illnesses. Those who had attended the Hajj will know that many people after the Hajj will return with what is called as a Hajj cough. And some of those are maybe uh, chemical and irritants, but some also related to infectious uh, diseases. In those studies looking at the culture, that the overall uh, influenza uh, virus was around 6%, uh, uh, but then also we have uh, adenovirus, as well as uh, para uh, influenza. The uh, presence of H1N1, I think that's created a lot of uh, concern in 2009 when the H1N1 or swine flu had uh, emerged. And the uh, multiple studies had uh, uh, take, took place. Uh, these are cross-sectional uh, studies looking at different numbers of pergaments, either 
uh, uh, returning uh, to their host, uh, uh, returning to their countries from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. As uh, you recall, we discussed that the um, um, public health challenges, not only for the hosting countries, but also for those individuals once they return from the mass uh, gathering. And the different studies had uh, showed very low uh, transmission uh, of the virus or um, percentage of those positive uh, from zero to maximum 1.8%. Uh, coronaviruses, and I had shown in the previous uh, slides the usual human coronaviruses that the cause of uh, cold, and these had been uh, detected at a lower level than influenza and uh, para uh, influenza. But I'll spend some time uh, discussing the uh, two emerging that had emerged uh, in the last 10 years or so, the MERS and SARS-CoV-2, which is the agent of uh, COVID. And this is one of the earliest studies that was uh, conducted looking at the MERS screening is the percentage contribution from each country and geographic spread of the uh, 5,235 screen uh, pregnant. And in that study, what we had done is a pre hatch screening, which included 3,210 pilgrimage and a post hatch screening. So that's to detect the, uh, the incidence and prevalence of uh, infectious diseases with MERS-CoV before the start of the Hajj as well as the end of the Hajj. And fortunately uh, enough that uh, none of those were uh, positive, but the, uh, uh, the map in the left side shows the distribution uh, of those individuals had been uh, included. And we, uh, the included individuals were countries with MERS cases uh, notified the, by the World Health uh, organization was mainly in the uh, um, uh, Middle East and the Arabian Peninsula, but also countries with close geographic proximity to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, as well as countries with frequent population movement to and from the Kingdom. And as I said, none of those were seen to be positive. Subsequently, there have been multiple also studies looked at a systematic screening of the Middle East respiratory syndrome coronavirus among uh, pilgrimage, and uh, none of them uh, were uh, positive. However, there have been only very few cases that had been reported uh, in association with the Umra or the uh, Hajj. With the emergence of SARS-CoV-2 uh, uh, and the uh, emergence of COVID-19, and this slide showed the policy of restriction of sporting events and mass gatherings in multiple countries at the beginning of the pandemic. So we are talking about March of 2020. And we could see the red dots indicate that complete panning uh, of the uh, sporting and mass gathering, uh, 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 respectively. And the blue uh, dots uh, indicate a partial uh, banning or restriction on the mass gathering. So had been at least initially a lot of uh, uh, variability in the different uh, policies uh, for each uh, uh, country. Uh, however, there have been some transmission uh, of the uh, SARS-CoV-2 at relatively small uh, gatherings as seen, uh, seen in this slide. Uh, these are either wedding uh, uh, parties, religious meetings, and uh, other uh, celebration uh, of with uh, a variable number of uh, uh, cases. Uh, subsequently, we know that uh, the travel restriction, uh, banning of travel, curfew, um, lockdowns of uh, countries and different cities had really interrupted the uh, global migration and uh, flight uh, and thus had a similar effect in mass gathering. In this slide, uh, show three of the planned or uh, mass gathering that happened in the 2020. The first uh, graph, the upper one, is comparing the daily COVID-19 cases and the planned uh, period of the Tokyo Olympics, which is July 23rd to August 8th in 2020 which seems that coincided with kind of the peak of the cases at that time in Japan, and thus the Tokyo Olympics 2020 
uh, had been postponed to 21. The middle uh, diagram shows the daily COVID uh, cases and the initial Hajj in July 28 to August 2nd in 2020. So that's the first uh, Hajj uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. And we can see that it coincides with kind of uh, a high number of cases in the kingdom and thus uh, multiple uh, risk uh, mitigation had took place and the decision was to have a very limited Hajj uh, pilgrimage. For the third uh, graph, which showing the Grand Mughal of uh, Tobas, uh, in Senegal, and it did take place in October of 2020, but uh, the number of cases at that time in the Senegal was uh, very low. So we could see that the different strategies had been uh, taken by the different uh, countries dependent on the risk and the number of cases that had been reported in each of these uh, uh, countries. We look at the incidence of COVID-19, uh, and this is in two musical outdoor festivals with a risk, uh, a relative risk, three and 10 days uh, after two uh, outdoor musical uh, festival. We see probably that the relative risk was around uh, two uh, in those uh, uh, individual who attended compared to those who did not attend this uh, festival although the 95% uh, confidence interval in some of those overlap with, the, uh, with one, but certainly that the all attendees, for example, in the first uh, festival, the relative risk was 2.46 with, uh, with the relative risk of 2.16 to 2.8, which indicate an increasing risk of the transmission and acquisition of SARS-CoV-2. These two uh, 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 pictures, one in the left, and uh, uh, Professor Amr had showed one of the pictures for the uh, Grand Mosque and Kaaba in Mecca in Saudi Arabia at the regular uh, pilgrimage. You see the crowds. Uh, many people said uh, initially uh, there are around two to three million people who attend the Hajj. They have to be at the same time in the same uh, location. Uh, about the social distancing, which is, of course, is very uh, difficult to maintain in the uh, under routine and usual uh, circumstances. The um, right side is the, the same uh, for the mosque uh, and the Grand uh, Mosque and Kaaba in uh, Mecca at, at the time of the pandemic of 2020, where uh, there have been uh, the mosque had been closed with a lot of uh, mitigation uh, factors. And these are some of the lists of the intervention that have been taken to decrease the risk of transmission of uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, and SARS-CoV-2 from a suspicion of the international umbra, uh, which was uh, about a few uh, probably uh, days to about one week from the first COVID-19 uh, case was uh, announced in the kingdom, which is March 2nd, 2020. Subsequently, there was suspicion uh, of the umbra suspicion of the exit entry. Uh, many of the curfews had happened in the two holy uh, cities in Mecca and uh, Medina. And subsequently with the uh, uh, ease of restriction and reduction of the number of cases that had been a strange escalation, a staged escalation of the reopening of the two holy uh, mosques and resumption of the Hajj and the uh, pilgrimage in 2021. There have been around uh, uh, 60,000 individuals who were allowed to perform the Hajj uh, with the uh, requirement of vaccination, uh, social distancing, which had been uh, beautiful. I had the chance to go to the Hajj at that time. And when uh, uh, actually individuals in the right, left, and in the front and the back, they are more than two meters away from each other with the requirement of full uh, vaccinations. So in the last uh, five minutes uh, or so of the, uh, the time allocated, I will discuss some of the risk mitigation and prevention. And we had talked about risk assessment, show some of the examples of the, how the different mass gathering at the different level uh, of uh, uh, heightened community transmission of infectious uh, diseases, uh, Pre-mass gathering testing and quarantine had been also done uh, in the case of uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, for uh, the uh, Hajj pilgrimage. Social distancing, sometimes that is possible. 
under uh, special circumstances as had been done in the 2021 Hajj and pilgrimage. Wearing of face mask, and I'll show some of the uh, data uh, regarding uh, to uh, that. And uh, also individual being asked to check for daily uh, fever. The World Health Organization had an extensive uh, recommendation to support event organizer in the context of COVID-19. Some of those are shown here, which include a pre-event, uh, uh, during the event, as well as uh, post-event monitoring and uh, surveillance. This slide shows some of the studies that had looked at face mask effectiveness against respiratory infection in the Hajj, and I think the overall uh, uh, polled uh, estimate showed a reduction in the respiratory with a relative risk of uh, 0.82 for those individuals who did uh, versus those who did not receive a face uh, mask. I think before the COVID-19, that might not have been uh, widely acceptable and adopted by uh, individuals attending the Hajj and Umrah and other mass gathering, but I think with the COVID-19, uh, many individuals had found this uh, to be uh, a norm. Influenza uh, vaccination, uh, so vaccine is uh, part of the, uh, in the uh, data that uh, 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 had been looked at and uh, different vaccination would be uh, required. I think the uh, uptake of the uh, vaccination might not be uh, very uh, uh, encouraging, but uh, this uh, for the COVID-19, I said, had been made uh, uh, mandatory. Um, so in conclusion, I think there's a lot of impact of mass gathering influenza and other viral uh, respiratory illnesses and the, uh, the risk of mass uh, gathering in relation to many of the infectious diseases with very wide type, size, duration, and setting, and thus these play a role in the risk of the transmission, uh, risk mitigation, and prevention uh, need uh, further uh, studies. And it is uh, very uh, important to uh, note that the mass uh, uh, gathering uh, and the study of um, uh, mass gathering medicine, as Professor Amer had alluded to at the beginning, that this is a new uh, discipline branch. I had the uh, chance to work with the, the father of mass gathering, Professor Ziad Memesh, who had been key uh, in the uh, fostering uh, many of those uh, studies, and the thanks uh, would go. Uh, to him as well as the rest of the uh, individuals in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia who worked in the uh, WHO Collaborative uh, Center as well as international uh, investigator around the world who also helped in many of those studies that had been mentioned. With that, uh, I conclude and thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, we thank uh, uh, Professor Jaffer for this uh, very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, uh, and also we thank Professor Zed Mimish, uh, who is uh, the key person uh, in the development uh, of the mass gathering and turning it into a separate branch of medicine. Uh, any question, please, if one have, uh, has any question, please write it and we'll answer at the, at the end uh, of the webinar. Uh, the second, now I have the pleasure to, uh, to, to introduce the second uh, uh, speaker, who is Professor uh, Alfonso Rodriguez. Uh, Alfonso uh, is a faculty and senior researcher at Columbia and Peru Universities, a president of Colombian Association of Infectious Disease, and the editor-in-chief of the Journal of Travel Medicine and Infectious Disease. Uh, Professor Alfonso will talk about uh, uh, the coming challenge uh, during mass gatherings, whether it is a challenge or not, uh, the monkeypox. Uh, please, uh, Dr. Moran, uh, go on.
Well, thank you very much uh, for the invitation and for the organizing committee of this webinar, especially Dr. Fatma Amr. And I don't have uh, any direct conflict of interest uh, to declare for, for this presentation. Uh, after the, the comments of, uh, of Dr. Yafar, uh, it's interesting to, to consider different specific challenges uh, for the mass uh, gathering, especially many of the mass gatherings that are actually coming in, in the in the in next uh, few few weeks and months and i would like to start precisely considering uh, sports uh, uh, mass gatherings such as uh, is the case of the, the fifa world cup uh, and, and this is in fact in general terms uh, a, a challenge and, and certainly that that is is a uh, it's a rhetorical and, and repeating questions uh, in every place of the world, and and, and here in Latin America, I would like also to to share some of the of the experience regarding that. We have um, experienced uh, that kind of of, uh, of situation regarding the the risks and the challenges that present, for example, the the FIFA World Cup in 2014 in Brazil, and the risk not only for arrival of of people with uh, uh, potential infectious diseases, but especially uh, when celebrating, for example, such kind of mass gathering in endemic areas uh, for different infectious diseases in these cases, uh, for example, tropical diseases such as yellow fever, malaria, leishmaniasis, among other. And this has been also the case uh, in other mass gatherings and events that can be included not only Olympics, but for example, regional events such as the Pan American Games that, uh, for example, in 2019 were celebrated in in uh, uh, Peru. In the, in those cases, it's important also, as I was showing, that uh, developing recommendations for so that is key, and this is a, a good time, as uh, has been already mentioned uh, by Dr. Yafar for for respiratory viruses, the opportunity uh, to remember the importance of uh, travel uh, immunization, remembering the basic three arts of, of, of travel immunization, such as the being on routine on the, on the, the, the vaccines or, or routine to be uh, updated according to the scales, the national scale, the required uh, vaccines, and as well as the, the recommended one. Remember, for example, the case also of yellow fever, meningococcal, meningitis, but also a, a lot of uh, a number of vaccines that were really important for travelers, depending on the region as well on the destination. And in this case, it uh, will be also important to consider right now in, in high-risk groups, the possibility to uh, uh, monkeypox vaccination, as is the case, for example, or the LGBTI community, as we may discuss later. So uh, many recommendations in, in that uh, regard has been uh, obviously developed under different scenarios and, and mass gatherings particularly religious sports are important. Here, for example, in Latin America, Holy Week or recent events such as the uh, uh, world um, uh, journey of, of the Catholic Jews uh, has been uh, uh, quite uh, important over the, the, the past uh, few years. Right now, with the uh, FIFA World Cup ahead in a few uh, days, uh, actually less less than a month. This is important to, to consider the, 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 the risk uh, and the challenges for that because uh, it's estimated that uh, more than uh, one point million people from all continents obviously are expected to, to visit uh, Qatar over the uh, next uh, uh, few days. And again, over the past uh, days and weeks, this was a, a question in the headlines of different New newspapers uh, regarding monkeypox emergence that before uh, May 22 uh, was not uh, a matter of concern uh, outside Africa and all disease and all zoonotic and all vital uh, zoonotic disease in, in, in Africa over the case, but right now uh, it's spreading all over the world. And this was the question if it was time to worry or, or to ignore, but as uh, many people know, and, and Dr. Fatma introduced in, 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 in the initial presentation, uh, on July uh, 23, this year, the World Health Organization declared this as a public health emergency of international concern for multiple reasons, especially for the 
relatively rapid dissemination over uh, not only European countries, but also North America, uh, later Latin America, and uh, in many places of the world, probably an evolution of the, the virus with the uh, potential clay tree that this is still under study with a, a, a particular B1 lineage that is currently predominating all over the world. And obviously due to travel and, and globalization, uh, a significant spread all over the world that in May of this year uh, uh, compromised the report uh, in less than two weeks uh, due to 13 countries, uh, especially in Europe with this uh, figure that you will see where we were, uh, where we were in, in June and right now with uh, over 74,000 cases that have been confirmed uh, outside Africa, especially in Europe, especially in, in North America. But right now, uh, as I mentioned, Latin America, uh, in other African countries, in some countries in Middle East with, with less number of cases as, as well in Southeast Asia. And, and this is an interesting uh, uh, map uh, with the cases right now, because as you will see, most of the cases are, are probably on the origin of travelers to, to Qatar, which uh, have uh, reported so far only five cases. But right now, we'll receive uh, uh, tra travelers and, and, and people visiting from European countries, from the United States, uh, from Brazil, that are presented most of the uh, 85, 90% of the world reported cases, especially the case uh, of United States, the, the first uh, in the world in number of, of, of reported cases, as well the case, for example, of Brazil, that both are uh, very important in terms of the, of the visitors to Qatar uh, related to the importance of tourism in the United States, and even the importance of the, of the fans, uh, of the soccer fans uh, from Brazil going uh, actually to Qatar as well uh, from uh, European uh, countries. Uh, at the moment that uh, monkeypox is still not clear, many aspects related, um, for example, with uh, uh, specific uh, patterns of uh, epidemiology, as I will uh, discuss, for example, the, the basic reproduction number. But what is clear, especially in May and June, is that uh, multitudinary uh, parade uh, parties, uh, parade celebrations, for example, in Europe, in Portugal, in Spain, in, in Gran Canaria as well, in, in Belgium, among other countries, has been important in the spreading of, uh, of monkeypox. And in fact, these kind of events may be considered and should be considered, uh, even according to definitions uh, that are already present, uh, as mass gathering. For example, uh, recently, the, the Christopher Street Day Berlin um, uh, Pride events in, in Germany, in Berlin, um, uh, it was uh, actually a, a celebration that around uh, uh, 150,000 people joined uh, uh, the first in, in person for, for this uh, since before the, the, the COVID pandemic. And this has been important in, in different events. So as, as you know, uh, the, the definition of monkeypox right now regarding the, the, the type of, 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 uh, of, of infection, this is still complex as uh, uh, thought. We consider uh, in multiple ways, this is, this is, this is probably, and um, almost to be defined in that way, a sexually transmitted infection is not officially uh, uh, that, but it's important that uh, although occurred mainly during sexual uh, activity, uh, is not only related to the classical wave also of transmission related to uh, sexual fluids, as I will show, but it's important in terms of uh, prevention, education, and promotion that has been deployed by World Health Organization and health authorities in many of those, uh, for example, prize, uh, prize celebrations in Europe and elsewhere. Obviously, this is not the kind of event that already uh, the percent, which is not respiratory, the, the transmission is, is, is completely different, is, is close contact, and, and it's not uh, uh, an aerosolized uh, virus uh, in which what, it's important right now, this, uh, this kind of study that has been investigating the sexual networks and the importance of close contacts, inclu including uh, the possibility of this during mass gathering. This has been 
for example, investigating in this preprint that uh, it indicates that probably a high number of group contacts, uh, more than 30 or more than eight close contacts uh, in, in engaging in, in sexual contact are, are important in such kind of event uh, in order to be um, a potential amplifying event. And, and uh, as was referred by uh, Dr. Yafar, uh, also in this uh, editorial, it's, it's important to consider this as, as a new challenge. In, indeed, it is a challenge uh, uh, under certain circumstances that, that we may uh, discuss later, but um, certainly uh, will be, uh, for example, uh, more challenging uh, uh, the uh, uh, mass gathering uh, sport events, such as the FIFA World Cup in, in Qatar in, in, in the next few days, uh, considering this uh, situation uh, globally with the monkeypox. As I mentioned, uh, not only um, uh, sports, uh, uh, sport uh, players, uh, football players, but fans would arrive uh, from, from US and Western European countries mainly where the, most of the disease is occurring. And it's important that the Qatar healthcare workers may be not sufficiently trained and prepared to identify this condition in early stage. They are, they, in fact, there have been very few cases and no, no experience in, in, on that uh, at all. But certainly uh, the, the, the group preparedness is trying to, to make the proper advocacy in general terms for the healthy World Cup, uh, regardless, pro probably not uh, too much specific for certain infectious conditions, including uh, monkeypox. Certainly there is a need for, for mass training of the medical, for medical staff and the world's involved, involved in event management. And that will uh, uh, identify or trace the infection early, which is key uh, in order uh, to isolate patients. Uh, and in, in this context uh, of uh, also surveillance, it's importance uh, of the use of an appropriate update case definition related to the current clinical presentation of monkeypox. As Jafar uh, uh, also referred in this literal, with Dr. Katan and Mamish, it's important to, to consider that the ability to rapidly detect uh, the cases, the cluster, the source of the infection, uh, to remember what I mentioned regarding the clinical presentation, which is genital uh, particularly, and for that also uh, uh, the consequence in terms of monitoring and the isolation for 21 days of, of, of confirmed cases. Ne nevertheless, as I, as I mentioned, probably regarding the, the, the project that developed the, the World Health Organization, it's, it's not too much focus uh, on, on these risks related to, to, to monkeypox. Uh, but in the past, uh, for example, uh, it has been uh, focused more uh, in, in other uh, um, health issues. And regarding the preparation, some studies, uh, for example, in, in Kuwait, in Saudi Arabia, have demonstrated that there is a low level of, of knowledge and awareness uh, among those interviewed regarding monkeypox in, in these countries in Middle East. Obviously, this is not in Qatar, but uh, it's an approach. And, uh, and there are no studies about that also in Qatar that would be important to understand the, the preparedness of, of, the, of the medical um, uh, population in the country to, to attend possible cases of, of monkeypox. At the same time, as I mentioned, this has been uh, in the trend with predominantly um, male, adult male, sexually active uh, men who have sex with men presented a genital ulcerative rash at the genital lesions, and with the growing evidence related to sexual um, uh, uh, involvement as well, the sexual uh, detection of of the virus in semen, particularly in multiple uh, studies. Uh, especially in Europe, Germany, and Italy, growing uh, the questions regarding this, uh, is, is this is it a, a possibly a sexually transmitted pathogen, where recently some systematic reviews have been also addressed the, this uh, uh, possibility uh, with common factors related uh, to the uh, sexually transmitted infections, co-infections occurring in HIV population, especially with the high detection of the virus in, in semen uh, or seminal fluids. This recent uh, systematic uh, review showing that uh, those uh, assessed 
and the overall positivity rate of, of monkeypox virus in, in the seminal specimen is, is around 78%. So rising this, this, this question uh, that has been also a percent probably in, in other pox virus uh, uh, virus. And at the same time with the, some studies uh, now in non-human primates uh, suggesting uh, this possibility. So uh, in the differential diagnosis when assessing this, uh, uh, this is important to consider uh, this kind of, of trend in the clinical presentation, the sexually transmitted infection, the possibility of co-infections with uh, monkeypox. But also I would like to highlight the importance of uh, some aspects that have not uh, enough others, such as the, the detection of the virus in, in, in certain surface, uh, surfaces, such as, uh, for example, in, in hospitals, as well in, in a, a household uh, environments uh, from uh, patients with confirmed monkeypox that has been recently reported. Even uh, uh, this interesting preprint that is still uh, no regarding the role in terms of public health, uh, instead only uh, be a proxy of the, the situation regarding the, the, the evolution of the case uh, for the detection of the virus in sewer sheds, uh, in wasteway, uh, water in, in, in France has been interesting uh, for monkeypox. Uh, finally, uh, I would like to highlight that uh, I was mentioned the importance of, of vaccination and, and vaccination is, 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 is in monkeypox is not for everybody for multiple reasons, um, and including that this is now is, is, is uh, recommended for a high risk population, healthcare workers, and particularly LGBTI communities, probably people at, uh, at high risk of complications uh, for, for the disease, for example, immunosuppressed patients. But um, it's important also to note that there are uh, not enough uh, data regarding the, 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 the real efficacy and safety of, of the, these vaccines. And in fact, a recent paper um, in, in, in Nature uh, Medicine uh, Journal uh, um, uh, highlight the, the, the problems of the, the uh, low levels of um, uh, neutralizing antibodies regarding one of the monkey bots vaccines. So multiple recommendations regarding this is, is, is ongoing, but it's not clear the role uh, of these uh, uh, in terms of uh, the real protection and, and, and the real impact for, for public health, but ne nevertheless, uh, working efforts uh, are uh, under developing regarding uh, uh, vaccines uh, for monkey pots. And this is also important to consider in, in the context uh, of mass wearing. I, I would like uh, to finish uh, just uh, showing this uh, special issue we have on monkeypox and, and certainly answering the, the question that monkeypox uh, in general terms has been a, a challenge uh, for, for the world in this uh, scenario of uh, post-COVID-19 uh, peri-pandemic peri uh, transition because COVID has not stopped as has been discussed earlier. And uh, at the same time, during mass gatherings, uh, monkeypox would be also a challenge and should be considered in the uh, differential diagnosis and, and possibilities, especially in people presenting rash uh, engaged in, in, in uh, activity and proceeding from um, uh, countries with a, a significant number of cases that have been presented. Thank you very much uh, for your, for your uh, attention. And uh, uh, really uh, uh, very useful uh, presentation in the current time, in this time we are living now. Thank you, doctor. Uh, now the, uh, the next speech, uh, the next uh, speaker is Dr. Uh, Anusha Rohit. Uh, she is the head of the Department of Microbiology uh, and uh, an SR consultant and the chair of the Infection Control Committee from Madras uh, Medical uh, Mission in India. Uh, uh, please, Dr. 
you're at peace. Hello, everybody, and greetings from India. So the topic that I'm going to talk about today is transmission of foodborne and waterborne viral infections during mass gatherings. I have no conflicts of interest to declare at this point of time. What we will look at today is a brief outline of an outbreak, mass gatherings, and the propensity for outbreaks lessons learned during the past outbreaks, diagnosis and prevention in brief. So an outbreak is defined as an occurrence of more cases of disease than expected in a given area among a specific group of people over a particular period of time. And a mass gathering is an ideal setting for an outbreak to actually take place. But does it all get reported? Probably only the tip of the iceberg is what we see in those reported as outbreaks in mass gatherings because the number of expect, exposed are extremely high. There is also, if you look at the chain of transmission infected people there who may manifest the disease, few of whom seek medical attention. Some of them may have a confirmed diagnosis with a positive specimen and only those get reported. So many a times the investigation of an outbreak requires basic public health knowledge, basic concepts on epidemiology, sources of specialized information like textbooks or uh, specialist knowledge, knowledge of the environment, laboratory testing, which may not be always available, and most importantly, common sense. So how do you identify an outbreak? An outbreak generally maybe comes to attention by the reporting of astute individuals who understand that it is a reportable disease and reporting a disease early may help to stem the outbreak early on. Or it could be through public health surveillance systems that collect data on reportable diseases. But why do you really need to investigate an outbreak? Because the primary reason for conducting it is to identify the source, to establish control and institute measures that will prevent further episodes of the disease. So what are the steps in an outbreak management? It would be first preparing for the investigation, verifying the diagnosis to establish the existence of an outbreak, establishing a case definition, in, uh, definition and finding cases, conducting descriptive epidemiology on all the characteristics, developing a hypothesis upon the source and the cause of the infection, evaluating the hypothesis, implementing control measures and communicating findings. Now these steps may be easy to do it in a controlled setting, but in an uncontrolled setting like a mass gathering, it requires a lot more planning and a lot more use of technology. So if we look at the future of outbreak definitions and the way we would identify outbreaks, especially in mass gatherings, with the COVID-19 outbreak or pandemic, we have seen web-based real-time global alert platforms being used. You'd also see complex pathogen detection platforms being used in laboratories in real-time basis. The case definitions are modified time to time based on the way the rapidity of the spread. Virtual contact and follow up happens eventually in terms of data collection from the case and contacts. Real time modeling and sequencing from open sources because data is now easily available. Evidence based control measures. And the mobile phone network has probably changed the way we've looked at outbreaks and outbreak response, especially in mass gatherings. So if we look at mass gatherings, the main um, data that looks at foodborne and viral bone infections relate to two viruses, 
that is norovirus and hepatitis A. Most other outbreaks in mass gatherings are associated with bacterial uh, infections with organisms like E. coli, Salmonella, Cryptosporiasis, etc. So if you look at the epidemic curve of generally a foodborne outbreak, you will see that the peak of the cases is when uh, it's closer to the incubation period being short and sudden increase in the number of cases that occurs early in the disease with the number of people reporting the disease going down as time goes. So the the acuteness of the reporting is when it is important to have very, very good surveillance methods to detect it early. For example, in 1997, there were 153 people infected with uh, frozen strawberries uh, and zero deaths. In 2003, again, this was, uh, this was associated with salsa. And in 2016, hepatitis A was associated with smoothies and cafe drinks. What about a cruise ship and norovirus? Because that's where you generally talk about norovirus. But according to statistics from the CDC, it is known that the risk of getting a norovirus in land is on land is about one in 15, whereas on a cruise ship, it is one in 5,500. So it's important to understand that you are still susceptible even on land for a norovirus. Now, what makes norovirus such a potential pathogen for a break in a mastering? The fact that it is airborne and the spread is airborne, especially associated with vomiting symptoms, has been associated and reported in many studies, as in this study that was in uh, published in 2021, where they found that air samples from deaf 10 different patients was associated, vomiting was associated with very, very rapid spread in comparison to diarrhea. This is another study on healthcare facilities that was published in 2016. And this study also concluded that even hallways and common areas away from the patient rooms could have positive air samples detected with norovirus ranging from 1.5 into 10 power one to 5.43 into 10 power two genome per meter cube. Now, we all spoke about respiratory viruses the earlier speakers alluded to. And in 2019, about 2.5 million people attended Hajj as a mass gathering. Out of this, this paper in BMC Public Health that was published in 2021, spoke about 1,836 pilgrims who were then included in the study. And in this cohort, they found that 10%, that is 133 uh, pilgrims suffered from at least one gastrointestinal symptom that included diarrhea, followed by nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and constipation. So despite the improvements in services, food safety, water management, hygiene standards, gastrointestinal diseases, and food poisoning outbreaks and diarrhea continue to occur among pilgrims in the Hajj. Another paper or in, published in Travel Medicine also spoke about the compliance with hand hygiene rules, even if explained to patients. There was still a prevalence of diarrhea ranging from 1.1 to 23.3% in 14 studies that looked at 2,62,999 pilgrims from various countries between 2002 and 2013 in Hajj. But again here, the most common organism that they found was the cause of these gastrointestinal outbreaks in Hajj were E. coli, especially entropathogenic E. coli, entroaggregative E. coli, and the other forms of E. coli, salmonella, and few other pathogens. But what about communicable diseases at mass gatherings other than the Hajj, because the mass gatherings can include 
religious mass gatherings, athletic mass gatherings, social cultural mass gatherings, commercial mass gatherings, political rallies, and funerals. And it is estimated that the incidence of gastrointestinal diseases per 100,000 attendees ranged from nine to more than 55,000 during outbreaks included in this review that looked at quite a few studies. Now let's look at mo the most common ones and I've circled out in this table in Christian mass gatherings with churches where there were cases of norovirus and all of these were associated with elderly residents and nursing staff and that indicated the age of the, the individuals who were involved in the outbreaks. As far as open scale, open large scale uh, air festivals like music festivals, there were again outbreaks of norovirus and hepatitis A that were associated with large gatherings that happened in UK, in Australia, and in the US and Japan. Now, let's look at the Kumbh Mela that was alluded to by the opening speaker at the beginning of this uh, conference. Now, the Kumbh Mela is attended. Now, I'm again going by the numbers in 2019 because that was prior to the COVID outbreak and when the numbers were not restricted. So about 50 million people attended the Kumbh Mela and early warning signals were identified with two outbreaks of gastroenteritis and chickenpox that was confirmed and investigated during this outbreak, uh, during this mass gathering. But what was significant is that the use of drones and technology, like I had alluded to earlier, showed that handholding training and incentive, incentivities of data entry operators help to measure and adopt in, in, and encourage reporting. And the lack of familiarity with the user interface often led to errors in reporting. A paper-based system was also followed as a backup to the data verification, which was done on the technological mode. Despite niche challenges, the web portal seemed to be a faster data analysis and interpretation. And in this particular study that looked at about 148,000 pilgrims who visited the Kumbh Mela in 2019, respiratory illness was the most common, commonly reported. And if you see here, gastrointestinal acute gastroenteritis only accounted for 17% of the symptoms and syndromes that were detected. Based on the experience of the Kumbh Mela and mass gatherings, the following was recommend. Investment in disease surveillance as part of mass gathering and public health planning. And I think nothing has been more relevant after the COVID-19 pandemic. Development of infection control and epidemic intelligence capacity for early disease detection and response use of web-based reporting platforms, preparedness of management for respiratory illnesses uh, with epidemic potential, and augmented, augmented lab capacity building to help outbreak prone uh, and detection of pathogens is what was recommended in the study. Another paper on food poisoning in religious mass gatherings from the state of Maharashtra looked at various infections and what were the causes of the foods that were responsible for these infections in mass gatherings. They concluded that the application of the WHO five keys to safe food can prevent such occurrences. The Food Safety Standards Authority of India or FSSAI is a forward-looking act that helps food safety at all levels. And it is also bringing into its forte, religious gatherings uh, and also including prasad or the langar or the the uh, uh, or the the blessings that under the preview and comprehensively addresses this issue. 
Now, this particular paper also looks at what are the most common foods that are associated with, um, with these kinds of outbreaks and found that grains and beans are more common, followed by fruits and vegetables. So what it concludes is many of the times grains and beans are cooked, but the contamination can probably have happened post cooking during storage and the temperature of storage needs to be specified. Again, if you look at foodborne viral outbreaks associated with frozen produce, again, the two organisms that stood out among the viruses were the norovirus and the hepatitis A virus. And if you look at the graph on the, uh, on the A pattern, you will see generally that norovirus is the most common, followed by those when you look at only the number of cases, the number of cases, again, norovirus is more common than hepatitis A. Distribution of norovirus and reported uh, hepatitis A across the world is shown in this picture, where you see many a times it is in Europe, US, Canada, and Australia that has been reported. So disease uh, diagnosis and surveillance is very important. So you have to have syndromic surveillance, that is gastrointestinal diseases. You will have to have laboratory capacity to diagnose pathogens in a timely manner. Reporting instruments and timely data transmission to responsible health authorities, whether local, intermediate, or at a national level. Structured forms and clinical reporting of hospitalized cases. Analysis systems of data from syndromic surveillance needs to be established. And definition of alert threshold for syndromic surveillance also needs to be established. I'd like to explain our experience with a small outbreak that happened in our hospital nursing hostel that houses about 250 nurses. In the winter of 2019, not that India has, uh, South India has a very, very mild winter, but 94 nurses came down with respiratory, uh, sorry, with gastrointestinal symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, fever, abdominal pain, giddiness, abdominal distension, and many of them had overlapping symptoms. This outbreak ranged from the 22nd of October, and the outbreak was uh, uh, concluded in, on the 4th of November. Most of the cases happened between the 22nd to the 26th of October with a small spike that happened on the 28th of October. Now, what we did was immediate testing and PCR helped us identify SAPO viruses and norovirus as the possible cause of, of the outbreak. Now, if you see the paper um, on the, and the picture on the right, you will see that with noroviral uh, gastroenteritis, you may also have a lot of SAPO viruses that also overlap with these, and the, hence diagnose, diagnosis becomes complicated. The outbreak ended on the 4th of November with the following recommendations from the Hospital Infection Control Committee. That is, hand washing area for the food handlers was identified and kept separate from the rest of the washing. Flow mops to be dried separately. Utensil washing also had to be in a separate area. Soap solutions to be provided in all hand washing areas. We also had provision for clothes drying to be provided in the terrace because aerosols were everywhere and we did not want the uh, clothes to be drying in common areas. The drinking water tap that was outside the washroom or rather near the washroom in the corridor was moved to a separate area again because we, we knew that the corridor also will have aerosols. Bathrooms and toilets were kept closed at, closed at all times and also, we started hypochlorite washing of the bathroom after every use, and this probably helped us stem the outbreak. What about prevention? So there are various methods of inactivation of foodborne viruses, like UV treatment or gaseous ozone, or a combination of uh, levulinic acid and sodium dodecyl sulfate, but none of them have proven to be adequate individually. And hence, a combination of different inactivated, inactivation methods may be required to inactivate these foodborne viruses. So to conclude, 
I think we just have to stick with the basics. That is the WHO's five keys to safer food. Key number one would be to keep clean. That is thoroughly wash raw fruits and vegetables with tap water. Keep hands, kitchen and chopping boards clean at all times. Separate raw foods from cooked foods. So we do not mix raw foods and ready to eat foods. And you also do not meet, uh, mix raw meat, fish and raw vegetables. Cook thoroughly because I, uh, if we look at all of these mass gatherings, if respiratory infections are more common than gastrointestinal infections, it's probably because these foods that people eat are cooked thoroughly. So we eat meat, poultry, seafood or shellfish, it's not really good to reheat all leftovers until they're steaming hot. Food at safe temperatures, so refrigerate within two hours of preparation, never defrost food at room temperature, defrost food in the refrigerator and cold water or in the microwave. Use safe water and raw materials because safe drinking water is still very hard to find in many parts of the world. And we have to check the use by dates and labels while buying packaged food. With that, I'd like to conclude and I'm happy to take questions at the end. Thank you. Uh, we thank you, Doctor, for, uh, uh, for all the, uh, the information you provided. Really, it's very really interesting uh, presentation. Thank you. Uh, now the last uh, speaker is the associate professor, Dr. Habtash, uh, my student. Uh, she is uh, in the Zarazir uh, Faculty of Medicine uh, in Egypt. Uh, she is an infection prevention and control consultant and is a certified trainer, international certified trainer and a member of the ISAC Viral Infection Working Group. She will talk about uh, vector-borne viral diseases disseminated during mass gatherings. Yes, go ahead, please. Uh, greeting everyone. Uh, glad to be here with you. Thank you, Professor uh, Fatma Amir, my dear professor, for invitation for this uh, Isaac Valuable webinar, uh, which we will discuss the vector-borne viral infection during mass gathering. And uh, during these uh, 10 uh, minutes, we will head the challenge in dealing with arboviruses during mass gathering and just to spotlight the measure of control this uh, uh, arbovirus uh, disease. Arbovirus disease, as we all know, the, are the infection caused by the bite of infected arthropod carrying the virus. It has been a long time considered as neglected tropical disease, but now it's listed among other infectious diseases, threat global health security, like yellow fever, hemorrhagic fevers, West Nile fever, Ding and Zika virus, even chikungunya virus. So, they have a wide range of clinical presentation, ranging from asymptomatic viral uh, infection, tra transient influenza-like symptoms, and severe consequences may occur from viral infection, uh, like uh, hemorrhagic fevers, uh, encephalitis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, even Zika virus can cause microcephaly. 
in addition, there is an overlapping of clinical presentation among those uh, arbovirus families, which are all part of the RNA virus families, six different taxonic families. Different Arthur Ward can be a vector, mosquito, ticks, sand flies, and others. Recalling that they are RNA viruses with high mutation rate, taking proof reading, they have enhanced host ranges, variants. They have vector shift ability, like Zika virus now can uh, infect Culex, and rapid adaptation to environmental changes once it introduced to a new environment. So what is are the challenges we meet from these RNA families? In fact, mass gathering will contribute to the arbovirus global distribution. Mass gathering will hit every corner of the uh, epidemiological uh, triangle, will introduce the vector to a receptive area. It's documented that mosquito and earth board can uh, go with air transport, not only transporting the vectors, we are transporting infected host to the mass gathering, mixing them with the suitable host. And if they infected, they can speed travel, speedily travel to their home countries where they may be still in the incubation period asymptomatic and spreading the viral disease in their home countries. Another problem in mass gathering when a new virus is introduced from the arbovirus family that the healthcare facilities and the staff might not recognize the symptomatic uh, patient. So this is an example of what happened in uh, uh, 1940, World Cup football. Zika virus was introduced to Brazil from the uh, endemic areas uh, with the attendee of the football game. Another example of the mass gathering introducing Zika to Europe. Uh, the attendee of sport activities come back to Europe carrying Zika virus, where they have Asian tiger mosquito will come in the Zika and establish Zika in Europe and uh, microcephaly cases begins to uh, be reported. Another example happened in uh, Cricket World Cup 2007, uh, here in the Caribbean, uh, they are endemic with ding and yellow fever. That indicates that there is a vector, there is an ecological uh, receptive area. The uh, attendee of the cricket world coming from uh, Indian Ocean region, they have uh, chikungunya virus, and uh, again, the vector have a big welcome to chikungunya virus in the Caribbean. Another challenge we uh, could face uh, from arbovirus is the uh, rapid evolving uh, the transmission mode uh, studies. Sure, it's a vector-borne disease. However, there is other uh, important, uh, must, mustn't be overlooked during the control program uh, like uh, sexual transmission. Uh, there is a paradigm shift in the model of transmission for arboviruses. Long ago, there is a traditional model, model for uh, being the symptomatic transmission is responsible for the outbreaks and the main transmission. Now, the asymptomatic transmission proved to be 10 or more times more likely to be effectively transmitted the arthur board. And this is applies well to the mass gathering. We just know that sick people with fever won't attend the Olympics who will attend the asymptomatic. As uh, Dr. Jafar said, uh, there is a, a symptomatic surveillance. We here should upgrade the symptomatic uh, uh, surveillance, uh, syndromic surveillance into upper grade lab surveillance. Should be an, another paralli parallel paradigm shift. Another challenge is that mass gathering is not a mix of people only. It's a mix of arbovirus infection circulation and co-infection must be anticipated in any mass gathering. It's not, uh, it's well documented in this family and they made late diagnosis, mask diagnosis, and affect sure the uh, infection prevention uh, strategies. Uh, this 
the three fellows, Ding, Zika, and chikungunya virus, uh, share the same economic, biological, and ecological uh, factors. So uh, if you are a country uh, of uh, one of these, uh, you can anticipate that uh, in your event, um, you may circulating the other fellows. Search for them. Another challenge is the uh, uh, media and political uh, pressure. Voices of canceling mass gathering or event uh, from media or even postponing and, uh, uh, the event in response to an outbreak of ar arbovirus uh, may affect the uh, event occurring. So how we can respond to this uh, pressure? Only by strong risk communication system, firm evidence-based risk management strategy uh, to uh, respond wisely to this pressure. And plus the challenge is that there is no one for all solution. Uh, every mass gathering is a dynamic event. So you should, uh, in your pre prevention strategies, you should study each of these factors. What is the event characteristic? When will be held? In the rainy season or dry season? Is the breeding season of the earth vector or not? You should study well with deep surveillance system for the host country ecological system. How will, how will the attendee uh, behave if they have a sexual transmission, uh, have sexual activity or not, young age or younger age? Um, they have susceptibility or they are, have been vaccinated like yellow viral vaccines or immune. All this must be kept in mind while uh, we are uh, preparing for control measure of arbovirus during any mass gathering. There is no one solution for all. So it's just a mix between mass gathering medicine. It's a newly the, uh, added branch in its infancy. However, we can uh, advantage of the experience of arbovirus management long ago. Together, we um, can merge to give the strategies of prevention. Uh, this is an example where the prevention strategies uh, uh, give an effective uh, measure against arbovirus infection. Uh, during 2004, Athens Olympic Games have a mosquito surveillance control program before the Athens uh, Olympic Games have been held with all these factors we have discussed before. And this uh, result in a planning and implementation of mosquito apartment program. Sure, in KSA every year, has yearly measures uh, recommend yellow fever vaccine as a mandatory vaccine before coming to uh, Hajj or Umrah. This in case of vaccine preventable uh, arbovirus infection, get the advantage of the presence of this vaccine. So the control measure is an integrated management strategy, uh, not a solo player, not a solo decision. It's an integrated vector control with environmental control, uh, patient care if the outbreak happened, laboratory plus uh, syndromic surveillance as, as we said before, and there should be a social communication with honest uh, uh, description of the uh, local ecological factor affecting the arbovirus infection. Sure, it's an arbovirus, so the main uh, core of the preventive measure is uh, integrated vector management uh, program. In conclusion, stay tuned with the update of the arbovirus infection. Stay tuned with the mass gathering medicine and be arbovirus oriented. And it is a cross continental multi-strategy effort we should all act together to get. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Rahab, for the, this uh, concise uh, but uh, very uh, explanatory uh, presentation. Uh, now we are uh, we are short of time. Uh, the time uh, will allow uh, only if there is um, uh, 
uh, any question, only for one question, one or two question. Uh, has anyone? Okay, uh, let me ask, uh, I will ask. I have two questions. Uh, first, uh, Dr. Moran, uh, uh, as you are worried about the uh, uh, the transmission of monkeypox uh, during the Qatar uh, uh, World Cup uh, competition, uh, I think uh, maybe the uh, the virus is is uh, present every everywhere, but it needs a very close contact, very very close contact to disseminate. So even if there is contamination of hospital environment or contamination of places or like that, uh, I think the virus will not uh, will not fly unless there is very close contact. So I think we should not worry uh, about this. This is one thing. The other thing that uh, uh, get fun or uh, get joy uh, uh, and be aware of monkeypox, uh, I think as we did with the COVID-19, uh, we need to stop uh, this uh, this gatherings uh, for the gays or LGBT for some time until uh, the epidemic retreats. So, what's your comment about this? Well, first, first of all, I, I think that the, we should consider that the, there is a low risk uh, from through phases, certainly, but uh, the virus has been detected, so. It's important again to, to keep uh, uh, the surfaces uh, as clean as, as much as, as possible. And, and, and again, it's, uh, it's uh, suspicion of the present should be originally investigated uh, as uh, our thought, as I mentioned, the low is, is low risk. Um, the, the main key here is a, is a close contact and especially the contact during, during sexual uh, activity. And connected to your, your second comment, then it's important to consider also the recommendations that even the World Health Organization has been made regarding the, the decrease in the sexual activity, uh, not only in the LBTI community, but in general in, in, in race, uh, in race uh, sexual uh, activities uh, that has been uh, uh, advised over the last uh, uh, few weeks and months. And this also includes the importance uh, on such mass gatherings that we are, are thought we know that, for example, uh, pride um, uh, celebrations uh, and, and events have been important. Also, sexual activity occurred during tourists and uh, in other uh, different type of mass gatherings, including, for example, uh, sports mass gatherings. And this is important also uh, to consider in, in different, different settings in order to educate and to promote and to raise uh, awareness regarding the, the risk uh, of monkeypox during such uh, uh, mass gatherings. Okay, thank you. Uh, the, the last question for Dr. Ruhi, um, uh, for Dr. Uh, Ruhit. Um, uh, don't you have uh, for the gatherings and like the pilgrimages of Kumbahela, uh, don't you have the, uh, uh, I, I mean, I, a condition to uh, to get the hepatitis A vaccine before uh, before attendance, or uh, do you have a compulsory vaccination uh, system for hepatitis A in India, or you don't? So, um, hepatitis A vaccine has been recommended, especially as part of uh, uh, you know a lot of healthcare worker facilities in India, uh, including the national accreditation for health care facilities and hospitals, but uh, it is also included uh, in pediatric vaccination, but as a requirement for the Kumbh Mela, it has not yet been a requirement, but I think there are recommendations for moving towards that. We, have, we do not have right now a rule that the Kumbh Mela attendees have to be vaccinated with hepatitis A as yet. Okay, thank you. Now we, uh, the time is over. Uh, we thank I th uh, we thank all uh, all the speakers for the uh, for their talks for the, the very interesting talks. We thank them all. Uh, we know that mass gatherings they are frequent activities 
for various purposes. Uh, and every one of us has practiced being a part of this mass ga gathering. Uh, it's not possible to stop, uh, but uh, appropriate strategies should be implemented to mitigate infectious hazard related to mass gatherings. Those strategies should be implemented at individual level, community level, at cities level, countries level, or for uh, at a whole world level. Thank you all for your um, uh, being with us uh, and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you very much.